In this video, we're going to be doing some practice problems to prepare for our test over polar coordinates and polar curves. So here we've got, what are the rectangular coordinates x and y that give the location of the point with polar coordinates r and theta r2 and negative 7 pi over 6? Okay. Now, I like that they said r and theta equals 2 and negative 7 pi over 6, but in general, you will not see that type of, uh, you know, clarity in the statement of the question. Uh, other questions I've seen in AP Classroom, they expect you to know that when they just give you 2 and negative 7 pi over 6, you've got r equals 2 and theta equals negative 7 pi over 6. Now, if you want, um, either way, we're going to have to draw a trig diagram, um, you know, in order to figure this out. Okay, negative 7 pi over 6, positive 7 pi over 6 would go down there to a 30 degree reference angle. So negative 7 pi over 6 is going to go around the other way to a 30 degree reference angle and it'll probably look about like that. Me personally, I'm going to just draw the standard, um, what am I saying, the standard 36 to 90 triangle here which is 1, 1 half and root 3 over 2, the root 3 over 2 would be negative because I'm in the second quadrant. Uh, and then I'm just going to say, all right, well, radius is 2. I'm just going to multiply everything by 2. So 2 times 1, 2 times a half, 2 times negative root 3 over 2. And so I'm looking for an x of negative root 3. And so I'm going to get rid of these. And a y of positive 1. Okay, there it is. Now, number 2, we've got a point in the complex plane. So in a, a complex number, you know, a plus bi. But which of the following complex numbers corresponds to the location of P? Oh, this one's nice. I don't know that I noticed this one when I was putting it together. All right, so uh, what you can see from the diagram, that 3 right here, let me just emphasize that in blue, that 3 is showing that, that that line segment from O to P has a length of 3. So that means that R equals 3. And then theta right here uh, is going to be negative pi over 3. Okay, and so I might just point that out here. And so we know that, you know, x, because that's a plus bi, a is like the x coordinate when we're looking at it as, a, you know, an x and y plane. Um, so a really is the real part of the, of the complex number. Uh, but a is going to equal, and notice how all four of these have different real components. So I'm just going to be going based off of that. So a is equal to r cosine theta. Okay, so that's going to be 3 times the cosine of negative pi over 3. And, you know, if this diagram wasn't so crowded, I probably would just work off of it. But I think I'm just going to make my own. That should be good enough. You know, that's my origin. That's negative pi over 3. So this is going to be positive 1 half, negative root 3 over 2, and then 1. Okay, so 3 times the cosine is equal to 3 times adjacent over hypotenuse is 1 half over 1. So that's 3 halves, and that's only answer choice C has that real part. Okay, now if we look at f of theta and g of theta, which are both polar functions, okay, which of the following describes the graphs of r equals f of theta and r equals g of theta with respect to each other? Okay. Now, I think that if it was something repetitive like 1 plus cosine theta and instead of theta it was theta plus 2 pi, that would be identical in shape and location. Okay? Um, or, of course, if they had the exact same equation, then they would be the same in shape and location. Uh, but they are not the same. I think this is like if we were graphing it rectangularly, we would shift left pi over 3 units. And so, you know, if you think about what the independent variable is in the polar coordinate system, that's the amount of rotation we do in the unit circle sense. Okay, the graph is just going to be rotated farther. Uh, or I guess if it's, I'm going left, that's kind of backwards. It would be rotated in a clockwise direction from the graph of G, okay, from G to F. So it is a translation. I mean, I guess not in the polar coordinate system. Um, it's not going to be a reflection of the graph over the positive x-axis. That would be, I'm not sure how I would characterize that. Um, reflection over the pole would just be making r negative. Um, but even then, it's sometimes not as simple as that. Um, it's going to be a rotation about the origin. And that one's... No, it might have been a castaway. All right, microphone detects sound based on the distance and direction of the sound from the microphone. This one allows the use of a calculator. 
The location of the microphone is considered the origin of the polar coordinate system. Okay, the microphone detects sound horizontally measured in feet with... I guess by... I was kind of wondering about this when I read it the first time. I'm going to just draw the polar coordinate system. Okay, this is going to be the microphone right there. And I think what we're saying by horizontally, it means like along the ground. So we're just going to say the microphone's on the ground and that we're kind of like operating on a flat area. I think that's what it means. Um, within the graph of one plus sine theta, okay, well, when sine theta is negative one, that's gonna be zero, uh, but that's only at three pi over two. So pi over six to pi over three, okay, well, that's kind of just gonna be like here. And that's the microphone. The curve is R equals F of theta, which best I can tell, Sine of zero be one. Okay, it's gonna probably be looking about like that. Uh, it's gonna be getting farther from the origin. What's the maximum distance from the microphone that the sound would be detected? You know, I actually think I can do this one without a calculator, um, or at least you know just doing the arithmetic at the very end. Uh, I'm gonna graph this thing rectangularly because the test that you're gonna take, at least if you're in my class, is not a calculator type test. Um, but this is the type of thing that I think we could probably figure out without. So 1 plus sine theta. This is going to be the rectangular graph. And starting in the middle, going up by 1, down by 1. Oh, 3 would not be 1 below 1. That would be a 0 there. All right. And then this, okay, it was just sine theta, so 0 to 2 pi making this pi and this pi over 2. So this portion of graph that I'm looking at is just right there. So r is going far, or like f of theta is increasing. The curve is going farther from the origin because r is positive and increasing. So the maximum distance from the microphone that sound would be detected would be when theta equals pi over 3. And so theta equals pi divided by 3, and f of pi over 3 would equal 1 plus the sine of pi over 3. Pi over 3, 60 degree reference angle. Okay, that's a tall one. That's going to be root 3 over 2. So 1 plus root 3 over 2. And that's going to be that maximum dif distance. I'm going to just, I don't even think you need to watch me do it. I'm going to look up what the square root of 3 divided by 2 is. Okay, pardon me. I think I accidentally paused the recording there somewhere along the way. But um, I'm thinking, uh, let's see. I, I found that root 3 over 2 is 0.866, so it's going to be 1 plus 0.866, which is 1.866. All right, number 5. R equals f of theta, where f of theta is negative sine theta, is graphed in the polar coordinate system, 0 to pi, which is the following statements about the maximum distance between the point on the curve and the origin. Okay, and what, uh, anything about this maximum distance or distance increasing, distance decreasing, we actually want to look at the rectangular graph because it'll tell us more. f of theta equals sine theta. Right. So sine theta is one that starts in the middle, negative sine will go down. And we'll have some graph there. All right. And then it's negative sine theta, so it's going to start at 0, go up by 1, and down by 1. Uh, let's see, it's just regular sine theta, so that would be 0 to 2 pi, making this 1 pi, and that pi over 2. Okay, the, so we're really only looking 0 to pi. On that interval, the greatest distance from the origin will be the greatest absolute value of the output. The greatest absolute value along the vertical axis, this negative 1. Okay, that's the biggest absolute value, so it's a distance of 1. Maximum distance is 1, and it occurs when theta is pi over 2. And number 6, polar function r equals f of theta, where f of theta is 3 sine theta, is graphed in the polar coordinate system on 0 to pi over 2. And which of these true about the distance? Okay, so the rectangular graph really thinking about the rectangular graph. Okay, we got this very similar to the last problem. Okay, so... Three 
Maximum theta on zero to pi over two. Okay, I, I don't love this question, and I think I'll explain more in a second. Uh, once again, zero to two pi, three sine theta goes zero to three to negative three. So first we would say, all right, zero to pi over two, that's really all we care about. So I'm going to just draw some graph like that and emphasize it with red. Okay. Um, right now we can just go ahead and toss out the ones that say the f of theta is decreasing, right? That's just not true. It's going uphill and I can see that. And it's positive and increasing. So I'm gonna throw this one out, you know, because I'm above zero and I don't even really have to think about anything. That's part of the reason why I don't like it. Also, I would prefer for it, I mean, like this just kind of gives it away. All four of these statements are potentially true depending on the sign and increasing or decreasingness of f. And so, I think what I would say is like this is just not not a good question because then if you know, all four of these are true and then you realize that you could use that on other questions of the same type, um, and I'm going to ask you this a couple of times and mostly I'm going to ask you when f is negative because it kind of works the opposite of the way you expect and you will not be right for the wrong reason like you could have been for this. Um, you could be still thinking that any time f of theta is increasing, the distance from the polar curve to the origin is increasing. And that's not true if f of theta is, is you know, presently negative, but it's not. Okay, so enough of that one, let's keep going. Um, more complex number discussion. Okay, r is greater than zero, and theta is between pi and three pi over two. Oh, I like this one. Okay, so I'm gonna just say, all right, that's pi. Okay, three pi over two kind of down there. Theta is somewhere in here, and r is positive. So, I'm just say right there, somewhere in that quadrant, is my complex number. So, indicates that the point corresponding to the complex number is above the real axis. No, no, it's below. Below the real axis. And left of the imaginary axis, that's what we want. Left of the imaginary axis. Wait, but below... And left. Okay, so both of these are saying that. What's the difference? Ah, uh, the sine of a. Well, a is the real part, so it's going to have a negative real part. So a is less than zero, and b is less than zero, right? This is a plus b i, like x and y. And this part of the coordinate system, both x and y are negative. Okay, so I need to see that both of those happening. That's going to be answer choice b. All right. Here we've got a table telling us about an interval of theta and what's the behavior of the function or the behavior of the graph of the function on that interval of theta. All right, so which of these? All right, so r equals three. I'm just gonna kind of run at them one at a time. r equals three, that's a circle centered at the origin. That's got a constant distance from the origin at everywhere. So as theta increases, the distance between the point on the curve and the origin, it's not going to be changing at all. So it would be neither increasing nor decreasing. I'm going to get rid of that one. Okay. R equals three sine theta. Okay. Well, I'm just going to draw a real quick graph of that. I think that would be, yeah, that's what we're looking at. Zero to two pi. So okay, three sine theta. And while I'm at it, I want to talk about answer choice D while I'm just going to sketch graph of a very standard cosine window. Um, answer choice D, r equals 3 tangent theta. We have not really graphed r equals tangent theta at all in our study of polar functions. And that's because of the, you know, those vertical asymptotes on the graph of y equals tangent x. Okay, it's pretty, you know, like misbehaved. Now, if we kept it to just negative pi over two to pi over two, I guess we might have an interesting graph. Maybe I'll pull that up here in a minute. Um, but this is like just not one we're familiar with, so I can't imagine that that would be the right answer in a multiple choice setting, right? We try to prepare you for these things. Um, but, you know, keeping with that idea, maybe we should go ahead and look at that after we finish this problem. Okay, so this is zero, one, and negative one. It's the same thing here. Maybe if I just zero pi and two pi, is that what I need? No, I need all four intervals. All right, so zero pi over two and three pi over two, and those are kind of applying, those labels are applying to both graphs. 
All right, so interval of theta, zero to pi over two, the distance is decreasing. Well, zero to pi over two would be right here. Okay, if on B, R is positive and increasing, so that distance would be increasing, so that one's out. Okay, here I'm getting closer to the origin. Okay, so it is gonna be this one. Okay, uh, but let's just kind of confirm that. Okay, when I am, okay, from pi over two to pi, R is negative and decreasing which means the absolute value of r is getting bigger, meaning the distance from the point on the curve to the origin is also going to be increasing. Right, and then I'm going to go back towards the x-axis. My distance is decreasing from the origin. And then, okay, yeah, this is making sense to me. I like this. Okay, great. Okay, but what's up with tangent? All right, so I feel like I may not have ever looked at this before. Um, this is not one I'm familiar with. So, okay, I'm going to graph r equals tangent theta as theta runs from negative pi over 2 up to k, and I'm going to let it kind of trace it out for you. So that's just negative pi over 2 to negative pi over 4. And then we keep going like that to about pi over 2. Pi over 2, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, which we think of as one full period of, um, as the graph of y equals tangent x, okay, that only graphs out half the thing. And I haven't really thought too deep about it, and I was just going to point out this is just really not a graph as it continues to trace out up to 2 pi, which that's all of it. Um, this is not a graph we're familiar with or that we've seen before in our investigation in this class. So something like r equals tangent theta, probably not something we need to worry about, right? All right, the last problem I got for you is a calculator question, which again, you know, probably not the most useful thing ever to you because you're gearing up for a no calculator test, but there's still good, there's still good pre-cal in here. Um, let r equals f of theta be a polar function in the polar coordinate system where we've got this f of theta and the domain of f is zero to 1.5. Determine the point on the graph of r equals f of theta that's farthest from the origin for zero to one and a half and give a reason for your answer. Okay, and I just wanna reemphasize, you know, like if we're talking about distance from the origin, we want the rectangular graph. Okay, that's gonna be really important for us. And so even in, even with the calculator, I, I'm gonna be graphing this one rectangularly uh, to make that determination for the biggest absolute value. Okay, so I'm gonna be graphing y equals negative one plus five cosine of three x squared minus two. This is just not the type of function that we're going to really be able to do with, do much with by hand. So I pull out the calculator. Go to y equals. Type in your function. Go to the window. Change the x window to be 0 to 1.5. That's 1 plus 5 times cosine of a number. It's not going to go bigger than 6 or more, uh, I guess, more negative than negative 6 or more positive than positive four. So I know that a window of negative 10 to 10 is gonna work for me. I'm gonna graph this thing rectangularly, just like without changing the mode. And um, I really don't think going into polar mode is really gonna be something you wanna do for AP pre-cal. So we need to think about the extrema. Okay, nice, yeah, it's like, is this extremum up here higher than, like, does that one go up farther than this one goes down? I don't think so. I think this one's gonna be farthest from the origin, but we need to verify. So we're going to go in and calculate that maximum. It's been a while since we've done that. That does appear to be to the left of the maximum. I'm gonna to scroll to the right of it. Give it a guess. Okay, and then report that f of theta, what is it? Determine the point on the graph. Okay, so f of theta equals in the polar coordinate system. Okay, so I guess that means they want an r and a theta. So f of theta equals four at theta equals, and these are just kind of gonna be my candidates, 0 0.816. That's, I'm good to round at that point because that's my answer. I'm not gonna really be doing anything else with that theta value. I'm gonna be going and finding another theta value when I compute the minimum value of the function between one and 1 1.5. Okay, that's gonna be really easy because I know that that was the window I was graphing on and it's just, I could see that little tick mark. And so there we go, and then we're gonna see f of theta equals negative six at theta equals 1.309. Okay. 
And so determine the point on the graph that is farthest from the origin is going to be the point, and I might be like really specific, r theta equals 6 and 1.309, even though this is not the type of thing they could ask you about in pre-response for AP Pre-Cal, um, there is something not that far from this that could happen in AP Calculus if you take the BC course. So r of theta equals this is farthest, I'm going to directly answer the question because it asks for a reason. Okay, and I might label these um, right here all relative extrema of the function f on the closed interval 0 to 1.5. Okay, now what you'll learn in calculus is that we actually needed to check the value of f at this point and that point as well, but visually I can see that those are, are going to be, you know, less. So I'm not going to be doing that. Um, all extrema of f on 0 to 1.5 there, okay, yeah, is farthest from the origin because The absolute value of R is greatest. I think that's what they were looking for. Um, oh, whoops. Yeah, uh, when they said give a reason for your answer. All right, now for part B, find the zeros of F of theta for theta between 0 and 1.5. Oh, gladly. Um, so we're going to calculate zeros. This is just, you know, really about as good as it gets. 0 to, I'd say, 0.7 should be. Definitely trap it in there. Yeah, there we go. Uh, 0 0.458 beta equals 0 0.458. And then uh, there's another one over here between 1 and 1.5. And so I'm going to calculate a 0 between 1 and 1 1.5. Give it a guess. It doesn't matter. There's only one of them in there. So 1.05. Five nine or one point oh six zero. Either way, we can round or we can truncate, and it really doesn't matter. Okay, um, but if we round, we have to be rounding properly, like only rounding up. If the last, if the fourth decimal place is five or greater. Okay, I don't know if we've talked about that, but that's something we definitely will when we go to look at free responses. We practice for the AP exam. All right, in terms of the graph of r equals f of theta in the polar coordinate system, let me get that on screen. So, that's much better, so I did that from the beginning. Um, thinking about the polar graph, okay, we just found the zeros of f. Okay, so r equals f of theta, so if f of theta equals zero, that means r equals zero on the graph, and the curve intersects the origin, or passes through the origin. Uh, the curve... Let me read through that one more time. It seems a little easy, but in terms of the graph of R and the polar coordinate system, interpret the meaning of the values of theta. Um, yeah, these are the t these are the theta values that cause you to run through the origin. Um, and it could be the starts of inner loops and things like that, but in, just in general, um, you know what? While well, we've got the technology out, right? Let's just go ahead and switch the mode. Uh, this is something that you just have not needed to do in my class. I struggle to see how this would really be necessary because like on a, on for AP precal because the things that you actually have to do with polar it seems like you know if you just had the technology to graph as I'm uh, whoops uh, it's gonna be three theta squared right um, let's see three theta squared minus two just making sure um, if you had the technology kind of like makes the question pointless to ask. So I, th I would think that most of the polar questions will be in the no calculator section, and especially also because they, like, you know, the calculator could run the, the unit circle trig for you, and they, we definitely want you to be able to do that without a calculator. Okay, so let's look at the window, you know, zero to two pi, step size, that's pi over 24. Um, I don't think that would be necessary. Uh, my window's all messed up. What is going on here? Okay, so... Um, 
First of all, oh, I'm still going x from 0 to 1.5, so I'm going to zoom standard. Let's zoom on the standard window. Oh, yes, and it's that 3x squared minus 2 business. Okay, so this is going to make a really weird graph. I think if we actually want to see what this looks like, we're going to need to go to Desmos. All right, so this should be a little bit more entertaining. So we're going to start at zero and just graph out this thing. Let's just let it go. And yeah, okay, we're seeing some real interesting stuff here. Um, I think there's, a, there's probably a whole lot to unpack there. And if I let k go, or if I let theta go negative, I think I'd be seeing more graph. Um, yeah, I just let you make whatever of that that you want. You know, for our purposes, I think we're just going to be uh, realizing, okay, this is the last problem on the problem set. Uh, that's going to be all. Um, if you want to if you want more to keep studying for this upcoming polar coordinates test, uh, you should definitely go back and look at the quizzes um, because we're just asking multiple choice questions and the multiple choice questions are really accurately represented in the quizzes. So that's all for this one. Thanks for watching.